Howdy folks! In this video, we're gonna look at the drill from Avatar The Last Airbender Season 2 Conflict that highlights the relationship of firebenders and their tools with earthbenders in the built environment. So today we're gonna dig into that struggle through the epic confrontation at Ba Sing Se's Outer Wall, with how the Fire Nation's drill operates, and how it was taken down. Now sit back, relax, have a glass of hot leaf juice, and uh, let's get into the video. So the best place to start is going to be a quick recap of what we're doing and where we were when the Fire Nation attacked. The drill episode takes place in the middle of Book 2. Aang has gotten the hang of both water and earthbending thanks to the guidance of the homies Katara and Toph, and the crew just got out of an epic sinking library in the desert when two big things happen. Appa is stolen by the sandbenders, and the hidden information in the library reveals that the firebenders will be at their weakest during an upcoming solar eclipse. So both of these things lead Team Avatar to the great walled city of Ba Sing Se to track down their big flying friend and to advise the Earth King on when to make the vital strike in the war. And when the team finally gets to the enormous outer walls of the unbreakable city, it, here's where we're introduced to the Fire Nation's great machine. Looking closely at this enormous land drill, uh, to start off, the thing is huge. Some online resources note the length at over a mile long, though it seems to be much smaller than that in the show, and more in the thousand foot range. It looks to be over 70 feet in diameter, but as we saw during the drill's takedown, it has a cavernous shell made of some kind of metal with significant void spaces, so it's not just a solid block. And the drill is based on attempted World War I era tech. The drills that the 20th century engineers used is what we would modernly call a tunnel boring machine, now commonly used in train and road infrastructure to create tunnels through subsurface materials like rock or sand. The British used it in World War I and was selected to use near enemy lines for its quiet method of movement that was all but undetectable at the time. And in the Battle of the Messines, the British detonated mass amounts of explosives in the tunnels dug beneath enemy camps and, despite some hiccups along the way, was generally regarded as a success. But ultimately, the concept fell out of favor as it lacked the ability to keep up pace with modern warfare and no more offensive tunnel boring machines were built. Until the Fire Nation. <clears throat> Fire Nation's big drill technology uses a cutter head that resembles typical tunnel boring machine, though the pointed tip and elongated threads are a bit of an artistic license that I, I do fully get behind. Now, this guy just isn't very intimidating. Anyways, uh, the machine caterpillars itself along the sandy desert, using massive tank treads that we see while the Avatar team makes their sneaky entrance, and presumably uses these little feet on the side to anchor the drill and prevent rotational motion of the main body in relation to the drill. It also uses a slurry mixture to smooth out the drilling process that also ends up playing a critical role in Team Avatar's takedown of the behemoth. Uh, speaking of which, let's talk about how they did end up dismantling the machine. Once Sokka got his hands on a set of schematics for the drill, he quickly identified that one weak point was the series of braces that kept the interior inhabited space separate from the exterior shell, and set Aang and Katara off to try and cut one down. Now, this is one of my favorite bits of engineering from this episode, as these kids figured out that they could reasonably cut the steel braces by using water as a cutting edge and throwing it back and forth using water bending. Now, not only is water jet metal cutting a commonly used practice in manufacturing today, pieces of metal metal cut this way are some of the most precise cuts that you can achieve. Granted, the water would need to be thrown back and forth at 1700 miles an hour, and we don't get a season 3 as the LA Dodgers pick up the two kids in the offseason. Though with the materials they had at hand, uh, this would have been better than at almost any option for demolishing the interior until Aang learns firebending at least. So color me impressed that Avatar's writers threw in some decent engineering concepts into the destruction of the drill. But of course, it doesn't stop there. In fact, after lots of effort between the two benders, the braces finally cut, but nothing happens. Uh, the top and bottom disconnect and slide past one another, but the drill remains intact. It's then that Aang recalls a lesson from their friend Toph to not just attack with all force at one point, but that it can be more effective at times to strike with moderate force at many points to compromise a larger system. Granted, she was referring to fighting, but Aang picks up what she was putting down. Now, I thought this solution too was just genius. It's a perfect opportunity to bring up the idea of redundancy and indeterminate systems. Redundancy, somewhat obviously, is the concept of having additional members or additional structural capacity so that if one portion of the system fails, the whole can remain functioning. 
Now, some modern structures do apply redundant load paths, but of course there is inherently an additional cost involved that some project types don't really warrant, so not everything is redundant. And an indeterminate system is the structural engineering jargon that more or less equates to redundancy, but with a more specific meaning relating to the restraint of degrees of freedom at boundary conditions. And if you're still awake, you might just want to take a statics or structural analysis class. So, uh, long story short, Aang and Katara's targeted attack consisting of weakening the drill from within does a great job of describing this effect, but it still needed another way of overloading the system, and this is where the bending comes in. When the drill finally makes contact with the outer wall of Ba Sing Se, the removed wall material is mixed with water and carried through a huge pipeline to be deposited out the back end of the machine, and Katara and Sokka get uh, pretty familiar with it as they use the flowing slurry mixture to escape their pursuers via the pipeline, and Prof to Sokka, a resident engineer himself, with correctly identifying the stuff so that Katara can work her magic. Now, for what it's worth, many tunnel boring machines will simply use a conveyor belt to take the mined material out the back of the machine rather than a slurry which would need water replenishment or recycling, though the use of slurry in drilling is common, especially when operating below the water table or at extreme depths. Its use in this episode to me is to create a nice plot point for our non-Avatar characters. But the final nail in the coffin for the drill is a stone stake that Aang carves during his fight with Azula, and with a sweet dive bomb from on high, hammers home the decisive blow. But for all the analysis we do on this channel, I try to leave alone things like can airbending cut stone and just chalk that up to the mystical powers of the characters that the creators have left for us. If they say Aang's bending can carve up and slam the stake home, that's good enough for me. Now, did all of this have to happen for the drill to be taken down? Like, was this the best way for the drill to be dismantled? Uh, probably not. The, the Earthbenders could have been more effective, uh, Team Avatar could have attacked uh, maybe the mechanical systems rather than the structural systems, and I mean, it's not the most well-written episode, uh, but I don't know, man. It's on Nickelodeon. It's a kid's show. I can only be so critical. Alrighty, uh, so far we've talked a lot about the drill itself, but it's probably just as important to go into a little bit more detail on the object of the attack, the outer walls of Ba Sing Se. So the walls are supposed to be 100 meters in height, but they do seem to be even taller than that, uh, perhaps 20 meters wide, which to surround the entire kingdom like that is pretty nuts. Uh, good thing the material and labor costs are pretty cheap, since a few skilled earthbenders can throw up a wall like it's nothing. But uh, what is the material? It's made of stone, right? Uh, well, my best guess is a sandstone of sorts, based on the fact that the outer walls are located in a sandy desert. Now, to explain why I make this very obvious statement, the way I understand bending to work is that the bender takes the physical environment around them as the primary tool in their arsenal. And that's why Katara had this nice little pouch of water, and why in the same episode we see water squeezed out from humidity in the air to freeze the Fire Nation engineer. Now, oddly enough though, I think it makes firebending the only type of bending that is actually created and not just a reformation of nearby substances, though I'm sure I'm wrong about that, so please tell me why in the comments. Now, to cover all my bases on the drill attack, first, uh, the drill was originally designed by the engineer that resided in the Northern Air Temple and was only developed by the Fire Nation using his plans. Also, the Fire Nation drill attack isn't the only time that the unbreakable city's walls were broken. The first was at the hand of the Dragon of the West, Uncle Iroh. Now, uh, Azula also technically dropped the walls, but uh, that was through a coup d'etat of the Earthbenders, making the dirty work of demolishing the Great Walls pretty easy. And then Iroh took it over again later with a colossal fire blast, which we get to chalk up to the rule of cool. Now, if you've been watching this channel for any period of time, uh, this isn't the first time I've talked about the breach of a wall. And in the comments of that video, uh, a combat engineer dropped some wisdom and I'll pour it over to this discussion uh, some things that I think also apply to the walls of Ba Sing Se. The fundamental part of military engineering is you aren't just holding back the forces of nature. There's actually another opposing group of engineers out there who are just as smart as you, and their goal is to cause your project to fail. It's always easier to destroy something than to build it. So you can't just have this attitude where your wall is defending you, your defending garrison is defending you. The wall is just a tool. All in all, the walls of Ba Sing Se hold up decently well, given that there is a defending garrison, though they may have been better off using earthbending to continuously widen the wall or something. 
Anyways, thanks for watching the On Structures review of Avatar's Drill. As I was researching and writing though, it was really hard to contain my excitement for the world building of Avatar, so uh, I'll be looking to do another video on it in the future. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any thoughts on the drill attack, please go ahead and drop a comment. I know there are more elements to the technology, conflict, and world that I didn't fully cover, and I know the internet has thoughts. Anyways, thanks again, and adios.